Greetings all, I'm Jonathan Cruck on Inauguration Day here in the village of Cold Spring with a special message from a visitor who came here a long while ago and did something more than just drink from a spring nearby. That visitor brought us a message that we can use today. His name, General George Washington. Greetings all. Welcome to St. Philip's Church in the Hudson Highlands. During the dark days of the American Revolution, an angry mob gathered, crying, there's the church of that Tory Beverly Robinson. He wants King George III. And in that church, those who worship the tyrant convene, burn it down, burn it down. Well, passing down the road, there happened another George, General George Washington. He climbed off of his horse and addressed the mob, crying out to the spokesman, That, sir, is my church. And simply by seeing the sheer presence of George Washington, they set aside their torches and let the church stand. Though the church was taken down so that the materials could be used to help fortify things over at West Point. But the example of Washington's character quelling the mob, that lives on. George Washington called the Hudson River the key to the American Revolution. Over at West Point was the lock, a great chain stretched across the river to prevent the British from dividing the colony in two. But Washington did his part to hold the nation together. In 1783, a little bit north of Newburgh at New Windsor Cantonment, there was a gathering storm, officers, meeting to discuss what were they going to do about Congress not paying them. Congress, of course, had no money at the time. The officers grew agitated. They were having to whip their men for going out to forage and take what they could put into their stew pots from nearby farms. On the day of the meeting, Washington surprised all by showing up a bold officer named Major John Armstrong accosted Washington. Sir, says he, suffer me to ask, what do you intend to do? Send us back to our homes with only our wants, our infirmaries, and our scars? Washington paused. I intend to attend your meeting. They had to let him speak. He said, I've heard about various things. This monarchy scheme of yours to make someone like me king, I view it with abhorrence. And these calls to march upon Philadelphia and take over from Congress, why, it sounds like a sowing of the seeds of discord. The eyes of the world are upon us, wanting to see what we will do with our newfound freedom and how we will shape this democracy into a form of perfection, perhaps never before seen by humanity. Now, gentlemen, I have something to give you hope. And he reached into his pocket and pulled out a letter from a congressman in Virginia. The men began to bristle and even boo. Washington struggled with the letter, and then he did something rarely done in 1753. He made a spectacle of himself and said, Gentlemen, pardon me as I put on my spectacles, for my hair has grown gray and my eyes weak, fighting for our cause for liberty and independence. And then he read the letter, but no one heard. They only thought 
Here's Washington making a spectacle of himself. You only wore glasses in those days in front of dearest friends and family. And that's how he considered those officers. And many began to weep, thinking of all of the trials and tribulations where Washington was there with them. And by the time he finished reading that letter, there would be no march on Philadelphia to take over from Congress. Washington, by that simple gesture of putting on his glasses, quelled the rebellion, prevented a coup, and held together the new nation, giving perhaps our new president a little map, a bit of guidance for how now to govern. During the American Revolution in the winter of 1778, this hill and parts a little south of here were filled with troops camping from different new states. The winter was harsh, but what was really harsh was the pandemic of smallpox. Washington ordered that his men be inoculated as soon as they enlisted. He said, I wish to avoid a grim and melancholic situation. Many resisted, some even protested and mutinied, fearing that the vaccinations might cause them to die. But Washington persisted and made sure that in spite of all of those protestings, that the men would be inoculated. Thus, he protected their health and helped bring about the uniting of those states, giving us a template for the path now ahead of us as we face another pandemic. Thank you. I'm Jonathan Crook for the Phillipstown Democrats. The day is broke. My boys march on and follow, follow Washington. Tis he that leads the way, my boys, tis he that leads the way. Where he commands, we shall obey, through rain and snow, by night and day. Determined to be free, my boys, determined to be free. With heart and hand and God our trust, we'll freely fight our causes just. March on, my boys, my boys, march on and follow Washington.